Yeah. We want to start off with a headline from Zero Hedge. It's yeah. a pretty hot, hot headline. U.S. military now is authorized to kill Americans on U.S. soil. Mm. That's, mm. That can't be possible. Yeah. This would open up the door for the careless uh, use and if more frequent and legal. It'll yeah. be legal now, so nobody will have to worry about that. Send in the troops. We need you to shoot a couple of these people. Yeah. They, they, they're opposing our policies. They're demonstrating against COVID rules. There's something they'll come up with. So I think it's very, very dangerous. Uh, so here it is. Now, Zero Hedge picked it up from Armageddon Pros, which is a, uh, which is a substack which they often run. Uh, it says, uh, U.S. military now authorized to kill Americans on U.S. soil? Just ahead, intriguingly, of November elections, and that was my second thought, the military has granted itself permission to unleash, unleash lethal force on the civilian population. Again, I thought this has got to be an exaggeration. So uh, I went and looked, and actually go to the next one, because this, this explains what it is. Now, it's not a law. It's a DOD directive. So this is, you know, the, whole, the administrative state where they take over they don't pass laws, they are laws unto themselves. Go to the next one if you can, because this is what they're talking about. And I went in and I read this secondly, and it talks about a reissued DOD directive that was reissued just on September 27th, 2024. It governs the Department of Defense intelligence activities and now includes provisions authorizing lethal, lethal force in circum cer certain circumstances. And it supplants the 2016 version which did not mention that. So I read all of this too, which is someone else's analysis. I said, okay, this sounds even more troubling. I wanna go look at the document itself. And so go to the next one. I actually went and looked at the DOD directive. It's DOD directive 5240.01. Now go to the next one. I'm just gonna to get to this really quick so I can, just so people, this is on their own website. Now this is section three of that directive. Assistance to law enforcement agencies and other civil authorities. Now go to the next one. Now this is levels of authority. This is section 3.3. Defense intelligence components may provide personnel to assist a federal department or agency, including a federal law enforcement agency or a state or local law enforcement agency when lives are in danger in response to such a request for such assistance in accordance with the following approval authorities. Now here are the authorities. I, I'm sorry to get so far into the woods here, but go to the next one. Responding with assets with potential for lethality, and I underline this, I, I highlighted it, or any situation where it is reasonably foreseeable that providing the requested assistance may involve the use of force that is likely to result in lethal force, including death or serious bodily injury. I'm sorry to bog the discussion down with that, Dr. Ball, but I really wanted to hone in on this is their actual document. It's yeah. not just someone's analysis. This is Jeremiah. 30 and 7. Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. Double honors my teachers, the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace and mercy to the elect, for the house of David be born again in this generation. And shalom to the 130 Asherallah who today are known as the Negro, Latinos, and Native Americans who before losing our true heritage were known as and still are the true Hebrew Israelites of the Holy Bible. In today's lesson, we're going to talk about what we just watched, how the U.S. military has just been authorized to kill Americans on U.S. soil. And as we just heard from that man reading, the DOD directive. Again, this isn't a law that was passed, but they are literally just now making directives. They're basically giving out orders that if the military is deployed to anywhere and on U.S. soil, for anywhere in the United States, that they can now assist any police officer or police agency, sheriffs, uh, FEMA agency, uh, FBI, whatever it be, any agency, if it comes down to that they need to take action, even if that action is lethal force, okay? And what does that sound like? Well, we just read it. Jacob's trouble, okay? 
Kahalaya Vashemeshai by Shemu Kapardash. This was foretold and prophesied by the Apostle Tahar, okay, which is the de facto leader of the Hebrew Israelites in the world today. Okay, This man has been set up by God to lead us back to the Father. Okay, He is currently the leader of our people here on earth until the Lord returns. Okay, And that being, I said all that to say this, that when that man speaks, though it may just look like an older guy, it's the Lord who's working with, through him, just as he did through the other high priest of Israel that you read in the Bible, like Caiaphas from the Bible, right? the high priest of Israel at the time, uh, during the uh, time when the Messiah was here. That high priest, Caiaphas, had just made a statement to the other priest of the temple, talking about what would it matter if just one man died for all the nation to be saved not realizing that what he had said was put in his heart or should I say mind by the Lord to fulfill prophecy now this is the same things that are going on with the Apostle Tahar and the other Apostles so when those men speak like for example I said all that to say this Apostle Tahar coined this year the hopeful year of Jacob's trouble and this was a sign from God to warn us that these heavy times are coming what we just read there was the authorization for Esau to have his soldiers take lethal actions against American citizens. And this is what's going to happen, what we just read. And what you're looking at here, this is the series of events which are going to come from this, right? You're going to have rioting, marches, you're going to have people going against the, the, the government, sedition amongst men, as you see down here. This is going to eventually happen. And why is that going to happen? Well, because when Trump gets into office, he's going to push the same laws that Biden is pushing, but he's just going to do it in a little different flavor. But it's all going to be the same agendas. It doesn't matter if, if Kamala was to get into the, into the office or Trump is. They're both working for Amalek, okay, the so-called Jewish people. And on top of that, they're all Edomites. Okay, This is the way that they, they tricked the masses to the slaughterhouses. And after these riots, what's going to happen is these devils are going to come down on the people. And you're going to just see masses of dead bodies from the actions that are going to be taken. From the people who have taken the snake bite to the people who are going to get caught up in these events because they're going to get be upset that they can't get enough food, there's not enough jobs, that the politicians are just continuing to screw them over. Because again, a lot of people are going to go crazy because they put a lot of their their belief and trust in Trump or Kamala, thinking that they're gonna save them somehow. Not not realizing that that these politicians aren't for the people. Okay, they're they're working for the elites. Okay, and that eventually that's gonna lead to Jacob's trouble, martial law, military coming in and taking action, and then that is gonna bring forward where everybody has, has looked into the FEMA camps, the re-education camps, the force holding camps, right? This is the time we're gonna go into this document. We're likely to see this come uh, after the elections, right? That's more likely when everything's gonna start is after the elections happen because it doesn't matter who gets in, there's gonna be an uprising, right? It's either gonna be the people who are upset that come all lost and they're gonna start riots or it's gonna be the people who are going to be upset that Trump lost and then they're going to go crazy thinking the, the election was stolen and what's that going to cause? Well, what did uh, Trump say? I and mean, this is why I say Trump's going to win because, you know, he's the one that bent the knee to Amalek, you know, publicly and he's come out to say stuff like this. Remove the jihadist sympathizers and Jew haters. We're going to remove the Jew haters who do nothing to help our country. They only want to destroy our country. And we will never let the horrors of October 7th be repeated here on American soil. We will not let that happen and we will solve the problem. That this is Psalms 55 and 21. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. His words were softer than oil, yet were they drawn swords. So though you have Trump here, you know, making those statements, making it sound like he's going to be there to protect the Jewish people. He's basically saying that if anybody 
goes out and talks against these small hatters. Things that they're doing over there in the land, Gaza or the land of Lebanon, and all the shit that they're that they're doing here from the, the rampant control, that he's gonna basically come down on them. And why is that? Well, because what are the first laws that get passed in all these countries that got taken over by Amalek that were Amalek brought through communism? Well, the very first laws were anti-Semitic laws, right? Basically laws that, that would stop the criticism of the small headers. And that's what these devils are attempting to do, right? They, they basically bought and paid for all these politicians on both sides of the aisle. But that's going to bring forward is when whoever gets into the office, likely is going to be Trump. You're going to start seeing all these anti-Semitic laws going to, to effect. But they're not going to be called anti-Semitic laws. They're going to be called hate speech laws or, I don't know, anti-patriotic laws. All this type of BS stuff. Things that are going to make it sound, you know, smooth as butter, right? It's going to make it sound like it's a good thing. But eventually it's going to, it's going to come down on people and namely on us Israelites, the Negro Latino Native Americans. Because why? Well, because we are the main targets. We are the targets that these Edomites are trying to get rid of. And why is that? Because we are their adversaries, right? Just like they are our adversaries, right? They are trying to get rid of us Israelites so that way they can try to claim back the blessing which they sold to us and which God gave to us. This is 2nd Ezra 16-71. They shall be like madmen, sparing none, but still spoiling and destroying those that fear the Lord. So as the Bible has said, there's going to come a time when the, the wicked rulers of the world are going to come down on the true believers. Okay? Now, if you're in this truth, when I say this truth, I'm talking about the, the truth of the Bible, right? Being in part of the Hebrew Israelite movement. Okay, this thing of ours. When you're in this understanding, you understand that you're literally following what the Bible is saying, okay? You are the true believers. You understand that Christians, Catholics, Jehovah Witness, Mormons, those people are all idol worshipers. They are not following God. They may think they're following God, and they may have the zeal in their heart to follow God or what who they think is God, but they don't know God. Right? They are not following God, they are following false idols and false doctrines set up by the enemies throughout history to deceive the masses, okay? So those people, those Christians, the, the Catholics, all these people, they are not a threat to the system because they're going to be in those churches telling people to get the mark of the beast, to get the next shot, and to just follow the law, right? What's that? Uh, uh, obey your masters and, you know, follow, you know, obey Caesar. They're going to be telling their constituents to basically follow what the government tells them right hence you know failing the the people going to these false churches but also not being a threat to the uh, the, the government status quo and the, hence they will not be persecuted in fact a lot of those organized religion people like vocab malone and you know dr james white and all these other anti-christians as they're more accurately named are all about right they're gonna be out here on the side of the government right on the side of the beast pushing for the the persecution of us Israelites because we hurt their feelings or because we've destroyed their their narrative of their false religions so again that's the whole scripture that says that you know that they shall even put you to death and they shall believe that they're doing God's work you know paraphrasing you know I can't you know think of that scripture off the top of my head but you know, it tells us this in the Bible, that that these devils are going to come up against this truth, right? But why is this all going to happen? And what should we, as Hebrew Israelites, in this knowledge do? Well, let's read this. This is 2nd Ezra 9 and 9. We'll actually start at 6. Even so, the times also of the highest have plain beginnings and wonders and powerful works, and the endings in effects and signs. Right, we are at the end, right? We are seeing these effects and signs going on throughout the world, through the people, through the systems set up around here. Everything that we were told to look out for are happening. These signs and effects are, are currently manifesting. So we know we are at the end. Verse 7. And everyone that shall be saved 
and shall be able to escape by his works and by faith, whereby ye have believed, shall be preserved from the said perils. You see that? Shall be saved from the said perils. And why? Well, because of your works and by your faith. What does that mean? That means that, as the Messiah said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Yes, we have grace. The Messiah died for us, which basically freed us from the punishment of the law, but that did not get rid of the law, which means the law still stands, which means if you want to be a good Hebrew Israelite, if you want to show the Lord you love him and that you fear him, you are going to continue to keep the laws as best as you can while we're in captivity. Does that mean that you're going to keep the laws perfectly like the, the, the false prophets at Zakari or IUIC say? No, because you can't. We're in captivity. We don't control the, a lot of things you know, that, that we depend on. So hence, we can only keep certain laws. So that being said, we keep the laws as best as we can, right? We are showing our works. And what do we do then? We then have faith that the Lord is going to save us and that the, you know, and everything else that requires faith in the Bible from the fact that the Messiah came in the flesh, he, he, got, he died, he was crucified for our sins, that he's going to return back and save us, right? That's the faith that you have to have along with the works of keeping the laws to the best of your abilities, okay? Let's continue. Verse 8, shall be preserved from the said perils and shall see my salvation in my land and within my borders, for I have sanctified them for me from the beginning. Then shall they be in a pitiful case, which now have abused my ways, and they that have cast them away despitefully shall dwell in torments. For such as in their life have received benefits and have not known me, and they that have loathed my law, while they had yet liberty, and when as yet place of repentance was open unto them, understood not, but despised it. The same must know it after death by pain. And that is what is in store for the two-thirds of our people, plus the rest of this world that is going to try to come up against this beast system that is being deployed around the earth. These people have no idea what is coming that are not involved in this truth of ours. Okay? They think that once they elect Trump or that everything's gonna work fine, that, or if they protest enough things or if they shut down enough things, that they'll be able to stop this behemoth political world system that is being put into place. Right? There's even a movement right now of people gathering to try to arrest Bill Gates, calling for Bill Gates to be arrested. They think that's going to stop what's coming. No, this is bigger than Bill Gates. This is bigger than Donald Trump. This is bigger than any individual person here upon earth. This has to do with the Most High, okay? He is done with his experiment here on earth, right? He has selected his elect. He has selected the people he's going to save and he has put into motion and it's now being executed his grand plan. And we are now coming to the end of it. And again, if you don't want to be crushed, if you don't want, if you want to, like I said here, be preserved from the said perils, you got to do the work. You got to, you got to return to your true heritage. If you are a Negro, Latino, Native American, or anybody whose father's lineage goes back to that bloodline, you got to come back to the truth of this Bible. You got to learn what these these laws are. Learn what the Bible wants from you, right? What to as far as following the Lord and obeying His laws. And you got to try to live that life as best as you can. And you got to call upon the name, his, his true name, not his false idol names, right? You got to call him the true Hebrew name of the Most High Father, which is Yahweh, and the true Hebrew name of the Messiah, which is Yahweh Shai, which is a Hebrew for He is salvation. So either way, I just wanted to share this. You know, I came across it, I knew it was very important, and I'm pretty sure it's going to be covered. In the next couple couple of days, but I just wanted to make sure you all can see it. So with all that, let's go and give all honor and glory and praises to Yahweh Bashem Yahshai Bashem Rukabradash Shalom.